I've been to countless metal shows and we've played shows at this point, done festivals and stuff like that. And to me, it's like a lifestyle. Cool. So where are you trying to get the band to end up? Like, what are your uh, future plans? Well, we always had plans of being signed. It just hasn't really, hasn't really worked out that way for us yet. But that hasn't stopped us from doing the things that we want to do. We don't need a label to tour the world, you know. It's just more expensive when you don't have a label. Yeah, so you're kind of independent then, right? Yeah. And that gives you a little more freedom then, right? It does, yeah. We don't have to kind of run things by anybody with what we want to do. We don't have anybody kind of breathing down our neck about creative direction and things like that. So, you know, but I think back in the day when you got signed to a label, it was guaranteed, like, you know, good amounts of money and tour bookings and all that kind of stuff. But these days you can kind of do a lot of that on your own. Now, a lot of the booking agents don't want to put you on a big tour unless you have a label, but we don't really, we don't really find that to be much of an obstacle in doing smaller tours. We just kind of make Mm. friends with other people in the industry and tour with those folks instead. Nice. Now, are you using this quarantine time to work on some music? Yeah, actually, um, we have been a little bit. We've got a couple new songs in the works, and as soon as we're given the okay to go back into the studio, once the studio that we use is open again, (laughs) we're going to try to get some of these things recorded. Our original goal was to have a couple new songs for our UK mini tour this summer. So we're on track with that, but like I said, with the uh, with the travel bans and, and whatnot, we're not really sure if the UK mini tour is going to happen now. Um, mm-hmm. We had one show confirmed in Ireland, uh, up in Belfast, for July 4th, and the other shows had been kind of in the works in London, but we sort of put a halt on that for the time being, because it's pretty bad in London with the, uh, with the pandemic, so... You know, oh, yeah, yeah. we're hoping to still get out to Ireland at least. We have our flights booked and everything already, but it's kind of a waiting game right now. Right. Well, hopefully you can make it out here to the East Coast too, either New York or Philly or something, and we can like do an in-person interview. That'd be cool. Yeah, that would be awesome. We still visit the East Coast sometimes, and we have another band that we work with in New York called Solemn Vision. And so um, we tend to we've done a full U.S. tour and hit up parts of Canada with those guys a couple of years ago. So whenever we do make it to the East Coast, we'll probably link up with them again. Great, great. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. big scene here in Philly. It's a huge music scene. I've been all over the U.S., all different cities. It's one of my favorite cities. Oh, yeah, we did play a show in Philly once um, at a place called Tusk. It's at the Woolly Okay, Mammoth. yeah. You know that place? Yes, I've been there. Actually, we played twice yeah, like, there. They uh, had they had Metal Mondays. I don't know if they still do. Yeah, it's but... like a, it's like an addict almost. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little tiny place, but you know it was a lot of fun, and we got treated like royalty when we were there. So we like it. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Now, how do people find you online? Look you up. So we're on all of the usual social media outlets. You know, Facebook, Twitter as well as things like SoundCloud, Bandcamp, iTunes. We have all of our records on iTunes. Um, we're on Spotify as well. That's a big one. Um, we we tend all to do most it. of our communications from Facebook. We do have an Instagram channel as well, although we haven't really posted on it too much lately. So it's kind of like, you know, without any new uh, new news from us, our, our, um, our channels have been a little quiet lately, but we were... It's kind of like we're we're not sure if we should be promoting this uh, this show in Ireland or not right now. We had sort of announced it, but it's like, well, is now the right time to be promoting it? <laughs> if it's well, not going to happen. It's good to, it's good to give people something to look forward to. At least they know you're coming, even if it gets postponed. You know, like... True. Yeah, I mean, we'll definitely end up just postponing, if, if anything else. It might not be till next year or something like that, but... I mean, it, yeah. we were really, really looking forward to it. When we played in London before, they really loved us there. It, it seems that whenever we go out of the country, 
we just get a hugely positive response. And I think in America, people are kind of spoiled with music. So there's so many options and people are just kind of like, oh, there's another metal band coming through, whatever. Like, you know, there's three other metal shows this week. But whenever we tend to leave the country, like anytime we've played in Canada as well, like everyone's just super, super into it. There's always a huge crowd. They get really into it. They love it. They buy all our merch. And, you know, they're just, they just treat us like gold. So we want to keep doing shows outside of the U.S. That's kind of our, our long-term goals is to play more in Europe, more in Canada, and who knows, maybe even other parts of the world eventually. That's cool. Yeah, when you have that energy, you feed off of it, and it gives you guys more energy. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's it's that's exactly yeah. what it is. You know, it's an energy exchange. We're putting out all of this intense amounts of energy, and we we got to get some of it back if we want to stay enthusiastic and keep that energy up. And sometimes in the states, you know, it can be a little hit or miss. Sometimes people just kind of yeah. kind of just like a little bit standoffish, especially in um, like New England, Massachusetts and stuff like that. Like we're from that area originally. And it was it was hard for us to kind of break into that area, even as locals and just sort of gain respect from everyone, because Massachusetts in particular is just a really hard place to win people over. People are very elitist in that area. And I don't know why. But it, it's very unfortunate. So we don't even really like playing that area anymore. We usually just skip over it when we're touring. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've noticed that. I've been to shows all over the U.S. and different regions. So just the vibe's different. So, yeah. Yeah, very different. You know, when we're playing a show and we're giving it our all, like, we want to see people rocking out with us, not kind of, like, hanging in the back, like, standing there being too cool with their arms crossed and, like, trying to decide if they want to feel the music or not. It's like, hey, man, you paid money to get into this show. Like, why don't you maybe think about enjoying it? Right. You so, try and yeah. engage the crowd sometimes and stuff. Oh, and yeah. Stuff. I'll, well, I get pissed off. I'll start, like, calling them out. You know, and usually when I start calling people out, things change. You know, I'm like, you guys are a bunch of fucking pussies, <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> and, like, if I see somebody fucking up in the front, like, just sitting there on their cell phone, I will absolutely call them the fuck out. It's just like, Yeah, yeah, on. well, if, if they're not, if they're texting, if they're recording the show, at least that's cool, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's one thing. But if they're just sitting there, like, on Facebook or texting, whatever, and I've seen it before, you know, it's like, what are you here for? Why don't you just go sit at yeah. the bar if you want to do that? Like, why are you up front, like, texting on your phone? Like, fuck right off. <laughs> yeah, that's disrespectful for you guys. You it know, is. It's, like, it's really fucking annoying. I think it's super fucking rude. So I always call people out when they do that shit. It doesn't happen, like, super often, really. But, you know, like I mentioned, in, in certain regions, like in New England and stuff, shit like that is just all too common sometimes. And it's just, you know, that's not... That's not the vibe that we're going for. Yeah, yeah. And uh, how about your stage production? You have like lighting and banners and all that. Oh, we've got a we've got a nice banner with our name on it. We don't do a ton of stage production as far as lights and stuff like that. We just kind of go with whatever the venue has. We kind of wanted to do a little more stage production, but it's like we would need an extra set of hands for that, and we keep our crew like pretty small and that's how we're able to to keep things diy because you know yeah, we're not yeah. millionaires so we can't afford to <laughs> have extra people on hand necessarily for sound and light we tend to just use the the house people and if they have the skills to do light as well that's always a plus but you know i, I definitely <laughs> wish we could afford to have our own sound person more often because some of these venues sound like fucking shit right <laughs> <laughs> no now, with this quarantine time, would you guys consider doing, like, a virtual show? Because I know a lot of these bands are doing all, starting to do virtual concerts now. Oh, yeah. No one knows yeah, we've, already, long done, we've already done a couple, actually. Um, there's a streaming app called Bigo. It's spelled B-I-G-O. And uh, myself and my guitarist, we've been doing a couple of live shows on there periodically. We've done two so far, and they went over great. We're probably going to do a Facebook live stream at some point. We just haven't decided um, when yet. But, yeah, we've been doing some virtual shows, and we've gotten a lot of love for those, so it's been good. Awesome. Now, besides all the music stuff, what's some of the other stuff you're involved with? 
Well, I met Mr. Jaguar at AVN's, <laughs> which is the, uh, <laughs> you know, the big trade show. I know that's the adult his favorite network. event. <laughs> I love AVN. In fact, ever since moving to Vegas, I've just been kind of like even more excited to go because it it cuts down on a huge expense that I was paying for every year. And now it's in my backyard, so it's been really nice. But yeah, I do a lot of fetish work. I'm a professional dominatrix by trade. I've been doing that for about 12 years now. And I moved on to doing video production probably about maybe like six years ago. And so I've been kind of making the circuit with all of the the adult shows that I can go to and making whatever appearances I can and meeting a lot of uh, fetishists and kinky people out there and just having a blast with it. Awesome. And what are some of your fetishes? Well, I have a whole bunch of fetishes. One of my favorite things, though, has definitely got to be humiliation. And Mm -hmm. in particular, public humiliation. Like, for whatever reason, ever since I was a teenager, I really, really enjoyed taking a submissive partner or a submissive friend, kind of. And, you know, back then I didn't really even know that they were submissive. I just knew that they would do whatever I told them to so i would take them to the mall and make a spectacle out of them like put them on a leash and collar (laughs) i definitely got kicked out of a mall once for doing that (laughs) they were like the security guards came up and they were just like yeah you can't be doing that in here this is a you know there's families here and (laughs) that's awesome and i was like what you know like i was like what are we doing wrong this is my boyfriend like you know we're and i was a little goth kid back then i listened to like marilyn manson and shit on top of the metal so like You know, I had a little bit of that that weird freaky flair with the black lipstick and everything. So we were kind of wearing, like, you know, collars and and gothy-looking stuff anyway. So I'm like, I don't see what the big deal is. And they're like, you have to remove that leash right now. You have to remove the leash. And so held on to his collar after that. And he was like, no, you have to leave. And, like, so they just, like, escorted us out of the mall. (laughs) That is awesome. That is awesome. (laughs) So, uh, so, um. I, I know that your time is limited, my time is limited, and, and who knows? They may come kick Nagy out of the graveyard here in a few. Um, <laughs> but, but before we hey, r- no rush on my end. I mean, I've got nothing but time right now with this whole quarantine bullshit. So. <laughs> um, before we go, how, how, do we, how do we find your music and, and find the porn and everything else? So the videos, you can go to goddesslilithvideos.com. You will get access to my entire video library on there. I'm also very prevalent on Pornhub. And I believe Pornhub is doing some kind of like freebie like membership this month. So you might want to check that out. And as for the music stuff, you just go to sorrowseed.com or also 